Welcome back to Power Play. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will huddle his cabinet in Montreal starting Sunday. And beyond the domestic economic concerns at the table, cabinet will look south of the border to the U.S. election cycle and hear from our ambassador to the U.S., Kirsten Hellman. How should cabinet prepare for a potential Trump take two? Let's bring back the front bench to talk about that. Christy Clark, John Tory, and Tom Mulcair. Christy, I'll, I'll start with you. If you were sitting around that cabinet table right now, how worried would you be about that prospect? Well, I'd be worried about it, no doubt. Um, but here's the thing for Canada, and the Prime Minister would needs to remember this. When he's talking about the United States in public, he should not be talking to a Canadian audience, which he knows is generally not supportive of, of a, a new Trump presidency. I mean, I know <coughs> it makes good politics, and I know it makes everybody think, oh, good, you know, they're just as mad about these Trump people as I am. The reality is the Prime Minister's job is to manage our relationship with the United States to the benefit of Canada. So what he should be saying is not, oh my God, this is going to be bad, which is, you know, a, 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 okay, not exactly what he said, but a short pricey of it. I think what he should be saying is, as Canadians, we are Americans' best friends. They are our most important trading partner. They always have been our closest relationship in the world. And we will work with whoever American citizens send us to work with. This is a decision of the American people. My job is to look after Canada, Canadian jobs, Canadian trade, and I'm not going to engage in mudslinging about which candidate we would prefer. I will work with any of them. That is the Prime Minister's most important responsibility if he wants to create jobs in this country. And boy, I mean, I watched his comments and I thought that is absolutely the opposite of what we should be doing. I think uh, part of what Christy's referencing there, John, is, you know, in the lead up to the Christmas break, and I think we've discussed this as a panel before, the Liberals as a whole and the Prime Minister himself were using some missteps in some cases by the Conservatives to characterize them as MAGA-like Republicans or in, in, in the image of Donald Trump. Politically, I think we all understand how, how that could work for them. Is there a risk in doing so, given that they might have to, as Christy lays out, work with Donald Trump again in the future? Definitely. And I think Christy is 100% right. And, you know, the fact is, there's a way in which you can talk about the misstep that Mr. Polyev had, for example, when he was holding up that Ukraine trade deal, claiming there was a carbon tax in there somewhere, without making reference to the United States and, and MAGA and all that stuff. So I think they can still, you know, point out the inadequacies or the shortcomings of their opposition without tying it in, because I think they make a great mistake by always tying it in uh, to things that may appear to be or, or be intended to be a reference to Donald Trump. But, you know, in answer to your principal question, uh, you know, is this a problem for us? I mean, it's a severe problem, um, and, and I think it's a severe problem on just the state of, of our own democracy. If the one right next to us, the, arguably the most successful one in the world, is in trouble, it's a huge problem potentially on trade. We've seen that. There's things he tried to do last time if he got reelected that, you know, he might well try to do again. Uh, it's problems uh, with regard to uh, security and defense. So it's a big problem, and they would be well advised to as we say, talk about those substantive issues, form uh, up a team again here in this country to deal with it, uh, with relationships, uh, but not get sucked into, you know, kind of demonizing people south of the border. Because as Christy said, it's the job for us to sort of say we're going to work with them and to unite Canadians as opposed to demonizing anybody south of the border, much as we might like to do it. It's so interesting. Right. It's so interesting to think back, Tom, to the first iteration of, of President Donald Trump and the strategy employed by Canadian politicians, the sort of Team Canada approach, the efforts that were made to get close to and develop relationships with people around him. One of the big takeaways as we watch everything unfold south of the border is those people aren't around him anymore. Many of them have either turned on him or, you know, testified against him or are just staying the heck out of the way. And there are a lot of people around him who are less, uh, it seems less willing to say, hey, that's not something you should do. Or, you know, you don't want to break off that relationship with Canada or your other allies. They're largely sycophantic to towards him. Uh, how, how much of that a worry would that be for Canada, given the, you know, given the, the significance of the relationship between our two countries? Well, it's kept creeping into the debates. Vivek Ramaswamy was one of them, but there were several candidates who at different times said, well, we don't look only at the southern border, we should be looking at what's happening on our northern border as well. So we've become a thing in, in American politics. And say what you want about Trump, but he's got a long memory. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of times when Mr. Trudeau really got on the wrong side, or most uh, in, my, in my memory, uh, most importantly, after the G7 summit in Charlevoix, Quebec, when Trump was back on Air Force One, Trudeau went before the cameras, started slamming Trump, 
But unfortunately for Trudeau, Trump was watching him live on TV and Trump blew a head gasket. Now, that's something that he likes to do. But this is, to, to, to Christie's point, this is the most important relationship Canada has. And so there will be an occupant of the White House who may well turn out to be Donald Trump, part two. And we're just going to have to deal with it. On trade, we did super well. I think that Christia Freeland performed majestically in renegotiating the NAFTA into its current form and got rid of some stuff that Canada actually wanted to get rid of and was able to, you know, to save the essential. But we've got to have that level of engagement. It always comes back to mind Pierre Trudeau's image of the elephant and the mouse. You know, whatever, <laughs> if you're being in bed together, and no matter how the beast, how benevolent the beast, how it twists and turns is going to affect you. Everything that happens in the States is going to affect Canada. But we have nice complementary abilities on trade. We've got a long history of understanding and working together. We've got a heck of a lot more in common than we have differences. And that's what we've got to concentrate on as a matter of state for Canada. I have a few minutes left and I wanted to just uh, quickly ask you more broadly, Christy, about the political impetus behind the cabinet retreat this weekend. This idea that, uh, you know, should, should there be another reset required heading into 2024? Or, and if so, what does that look like? Like, what's your, what's your impression of how politically important this retreat might be for this government? Well, I, I think retreats always get overrated a little bit in public. They're never as effective as you think they are, having led a whole lot of them. I would say, though, you know, it is it is useful, hopefully, for them to be able to sit down and get decide to get focused and get coordinated. And, I mean, from a political perspective, they'll, they'll have pollsters in there telling them, you know, what's working and what's not and all the rest of that. But, I mean, ultimately, I'm not expecting a whole lot of change from this one because we haven't seen it from previous ones. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I do hope, though, and I want to just go back to that last point that you were talking about, Vashi, because I think it's really important. Canada needs to have um, a relationship with the United States and with, you know, with countries around the world. I hope that folks spend some time thinking about Canada's place in the world and how we can reassert that place as a relevant country, as a middle power in the world that can make a difference. That sort of has fallen off the agenda. And you know, part of me always hopes that when they get together, they might talk about some of those things that, you know, that are just not even on the agenda now, but really should be for the betterment of all Canadians. Well, we do certainly know at least the, uh, John, the, uh, the relationship with the U.S. will for sure be on the agenda. The ambassador I know is traveling to Montreal to present to cabinet. Uh, I'll give the last word to you. Your thoughts on the potential political impact, if any, of this retreat? Well, it's tough because the two things that they need to, you know, deal with the most, I think, uh, namely the state of the economy and seeing some improvement there and these uh, kind of puddles they keep stepping into, um, you know, something like the prime minister's vacation. It's not entirely that one their fault because he did try to follow the rules, but these just distract from any attempt to get back on track. And then if you've wanted to have some other message coming out of um, out of the retreat, it's probably not going to be that you wanted to deal with the refugee issue. I think you need to deal with it. So I think the, the ability they have to control any kind of new reset message coming out is hard. And I come back to what I've said before, which is I think in the winter and spring months, they need the economy to turn around, interest rates to start to come down, uh, and they need to stop having these distraction type stories that take people off whatever message they want to get out, which sure isn't about the kind of trivialities that end up getting endlessly debated.